average weight legislation can be a confusing topic, so in this video we will break down the legislation and see if it applies to your business. So, does it apply to you? Well, if you produce and sell packed food products based on weight, it is a legal requirement to adhere to the Weights and Measures regulations. So what does the legislation require? Well, when selling packaged food products based on their weight or volume, the product must be packed using either the minimum weight system or the average weight system. What is the minimum system or average weight system, you ask? Well, the minimum system means products are packed against the declared weight on the label. The weight of the product can be more, but not less, than the declared weight. This method is suitable where a low volume of products is being produced, as each packed product is weighed and checked individually for compliance. As a result though, this system can result in more product giveaway and potentially lower profits. The average weight system is more complex though. When dealing with larger batches, it's more appropriate to use the average weight system, where products are packed to a measured average or nominal weight. This average is calculated through sampling or sample weighing. Sampling is the process of measuring a certain number of products from the batch to determine an average weight or volume. The necessary method and frequency of sampling for your business will be stipulated by trading standards. If your business is using the average weight system, you must make sure you follow the three packers rules. The three packers rules are as follows. Number one, the average weight of a batch must meet or exceed the nominal weight of the batch. Simply put, the average weight of product within a batch needs to be the same or greater than the weight labeled on the packaging. You can calculate this by adding up all of the weights of the sample products and then divide the total weight by the number of samples. Now, before we move on to rules two and three, let's learn about tolerable negative error. When weighing packaged food products, they must not be less on average than the weight declared on the label. A small number of products can fall below a certain margin of error, aka the tolerable negative error, and no package can be underweight by more than twice the tolerable negative error. You can find your tolerable negative error by using this table. If your target weight falls into a category with numbers listed in the left column, you just need to find this percentage of your target weight. If your target weight falls into a category with numbers on the right, then you just use this number as your tolerable negative error. Now we understand what a tolerable negative error is and how to find what yours is, let's move on to rules two and three of the three Packers rules. Rule two states that there must be no more than 2.5% of significantly underweight samples or weights, also known as T1 samples. Your T1 weight is equal to your tolerable negative error. And finally, on to rule three. Rule three states that there must be no extremely underweight samples at all. These are also known as T2 samples. Your T2 weight can be found by multiplying your tolerable negative error weight by two. So, Let's summarize what we've learned with some examples. In this example, we have a packaged pack of four cupcakes that should weigh 145 grams. Now, we know our target weight is 145 grams. Let's work out our tolerable negative error. Going back to the table we looked at earlier, we can see our product would fall into this category just here. So, we just need to find 4.5% of our 145 gram target weight, which is 6.525 grams. So, now we have our tolerable negative error, let's work out our T1 and T2 weights. So, the T1 weight is equal to our tolerable negative error, so our T1 weight will be 6.525 grams. The T2 weight is the tolerable negative error multiplied by 2. So our T2 weight is 13.05 grams. So how do we use these weights to adhere to legislation? Well, if we go back to the three Packers rules, we know that there can be no more than 2.5% of T1 samples. 
and no T2 samples at all. So just minus the T1 and T2 weights from your target weight and you have the threshold that the weight cannot go beneath. Our 145 gram target weight minus our 6.525 gram T1 weight gives us a T1 threshold of 138.475 grams. So there must be no more than 2.5% of your sampled product under 138.475 grams or your batch will fail to meet legislation. Our 145 gram target weight minus our 13.05 gram T2 weight equals 131.95 grams. That is our T2 threshold. No product at all can be below that weight or your batch will fail to meet the legislation. And that's how average weight legislation works. We hope you have come away from this video with a better understanding of the weights and measures average weight legislations and how you can adhere to it. As a bonus, Stevens Traceability have a calculator that can automatically calculate your T1 and T2 weights for you. You can find it in the description of this video or just head to this webpage. Get in touch with our expert team if you'd like to learn more about average weight by visiting our website www.stevenstraceability.com, emailing sales at stevenstraceability.com or by phoning us on 01254 685 200.